The escalation of tensions between Russia and Ukraine reached a new peak when Russian military forces took control of military installations in the Crimea Peninsula. In response, Ukraine issued an ultimatum demanding the release of prisoners held during the conflicts, turning them into pawns in a complex geopolitical chessboard. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, persisting for over 500 days, deepens, sealing a turbulent chapter in the contemporary history of Eastern Europe. With reverberations being felt globally, international attention is once again directed towards Russia's extensive geography. Russia, whose borders stretch across vast territories, connecting Europe, the Middle East and Asia, is home to an intricate tapestry of geopolitical and cultural dimensions. In addition to delineating borders with numerous key countries, the Russian space encompasses 22 autonomous republics, unique entities that function almost as nations within a nation, possessing their own official languages, constitutions, and autonomy over natural resources. These republics offer a diverse panorama of cultures and traditions, providing a richer and more diverse perspective on Russian identity, surpassing the stereotypes often associated with the country. Each republic harbors its own mosaic of cultural customs, albeit with a gradual erosion of this rich diversity due to homogenization. The landscape is intricate and multifaceted, and it is impossible to deny that politics and geopolitics are fundamental actors in this story. Among these republics, Crimea holds a prominent position due to its internationally controversial status. The crisis of 2014, triggered by the revolution in Ukraine that resulted in the ousting of President Viktor Yanukovych, culminated in the annexation of Crimea by Russia, leading to a series of confrontations involving separatist forces and Russian troops. The region, with a history marked by turbulence, exemplifies the geopolitical complexities that shape relations between the Russian republics and their neighboring nations. The controversial referendum that took place in Crimea, aimed at assessing reunification with Russia, officially obtained approval from over 90% of voters. However, the vote was marred by boycotts and international criticism, being considered illegitimate by Western governments and the United Nations. Despite the controversies, Russia formalized the annexation on March 18, 2014, incorporating the Republic of Crimea and the federal city of Sevastopol as the 84th and 85th federal subjects of the Russian Federation. The situation escalated substantially when Ukraine suspended the supply of water through the North Crimean Canal, responsible for providing 85% of the region's drinking water. This action led to a drastic reduction in the region's agricultural area, from 130,000 square kilometers in 2013 to a mere 14,000 in 2017, revealing not only political rifts, but also the challenges faced on the environmental and agricultural fronts in that area. The history of Crimea is just one among several that underscore the geopolitical complexity embedded in the Russian republics, unveiling the interplay of politics, culture, and history in the vast and varied Russian tapestry. Crimea, endowed with a distinct geography, is connected to Ukraine by a narrow strip of land only five kilometers wide, known as the Perikop Isthmus, isolating it almost like an island. This piece of land is adorned by a splendid landscape of mountains and subtropical climate, nuances that challenge the typically cold perception often associated with Russia. The cultural diversity of Crimea is also exceptionally unique, with a significant population of Crimean Tatars, a mostly Muslim ethnic minority that in 2014 accounted for approximately 10% of the region's inhabitants. The history of the Crimean Tatars, deeply intertwined with centuries, dates back to the late Middle Ages and offers a substantial contribution to the cultural diversity of the area. However, they faced challenges, especially when they were deported to Central Asia under the leadership of Joseph Stalin in a mass punishment. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, many Crimean Tatars began the process of returning to their homeland. Currently, the demographic composition is mostly made up of Russians and Ukrainians, representing 68 and 16 percent of the population, respectively. Turning our focus to a region that more closely mirrors the cold climate and vastness of Russian territory, the Republic of Sakha, Yakutia, emerges as a remarkable case. Sakha constitutes the largest subnational entity on the planet. If considered an autonomous nation, it would be the eighth largest country, fitting between Argentina and India in terms of territorial size. Cultural diversity also permeates Sakha, 
with the population predominantly composed of Yakuts, making up about 50%, followed by Russians at 38%. The area recognizes two official languages, Russian and Sakha, with the latter spoken by approximately 40% of residents and belonging to the Turkic language family. Yakuts are known for their similarities to ethnic groups in East Asia, a distinctly rare characteristic in Russia. The cultural expressions of Sakha offer a window into the lush and unknown, permeated by multicolored attire, a unique cuisine, and lively summer festivals. The Isyak festival stands out as a memorable occasion where families gather to taste traditional delicacies such as pancakes, horse meat, fish, whether dried or fried, and kumis, a fermented beverage derived from mare's milk. Yakutsk, the capital of Sakha, is often cited as the coldest city on the planet. With an average temperature of minus 8 degrees Celsius, winters can plummet to a chilling minus 38 degrees in January. Despite the harsh climate, the city, built on permanent permafrost, is known for its diamond mines, such as the Mir Diamond Mine, not to be confused with the Diamond Mine 2017, which is one of the main sources for the local economy and reinforces Russia's position as a significant player in the global diamond trade. The Republic of Sakha, Yakutia, stands out not only for its extremely harsh climate and colorful celebrations, but also for its abundant diamond reserves, which provide a valuable contribution to Russia's coffers. As we shift our focus, we are led to the fascinating Republic of Bashkortostan, situated near Kazakhstan and home to a thriving population of approximately 4 million people, making it one of the most densely populated Russian republics. The territory is adorned with 27 lakes, roughly 13,000 rivers, and a myriad of mountains that shape the landscape. Ethnic diversity is prominent, with Bashkirs, Russians, Tatars, and various other minorities cohabiting the land of Bashkortostan. The culture and history of Bashkortostan are uniquely rich, with dances, music, and folklore festivals inherently woven into the local daily life. The capital, which is home to about a quarter of the population, also stands out as the heart of Russia's oil refining operations, constituting an essential segment of the republic's economy. Further to the south, on the shores of the Caspian Sea, the Republic of Dagestan emerges as Russia's ethnic and linguistic mosaic hosting more than 30 ethnic groups and 81 nationalities. While it boasts wide ethnic diversity, Dagestan exhibits religious homogeneity, with 83% of the population practicing Islam, reflecting its geographical and cultural proximity to the Middle East. Exploring the regions adjacent to the Black Sea coast, we are introduced to an agronomic peculiarity, viticulture, which contrasts with the typically cold perception associated with Russia. Additionally, the area is generously endowed with natural resources such as oil, natural gas, gold, silver, tungsten, and iron. However, this natural opulence has not translated into prosperity for the local population, as per capita income remains around $38,000, reflecting a dichotomy observed in many Russian republics. The centralization of power in Russia, which intensified with Vladimir Putin's rise to power in 2000, obscured the autonomy of these republics. The establishment of federal districts represented a move towards strengthening federal control, reaching its peak in the 2018 legislation that prioritized the Russian language over the indigenous languages of the republics. This increase in centralization, aiming for a unified Russia under a single cultural and linguistic banner, jeopardizes the preservation of the valuable mosaic of republics, their cultures and languages, in a nation that geographically unfolds across a vast array of territories and distinct narratives. The immense Russian territory spans various ecosystems, from the vast Siberian stage to the lush forests of the taiga, reaching the magnificent Caucasus Mountains. In some regions, temperatures can plummet to incredible lows of 50 degrees below zero, while in others, they can rise to a comfortable 30 degrees. The nation hosts a sizable population, exceeding 144 million inhabitants, with highly populated metropolises like Moscow and St. Petersburg standing out prominently. Reflecting on the past, it might be astonishing to consider that in ancient times, Slavic tribes were dominant in these lands, establishing themselves as one of the most prominent groups in Europe. It all began when these Slavic tribes lived in communities, often facing conflicts among themselves. However, in the 9th century, 
Kiev emerged as the heart of a prosperous realm, later recognized as Kievan Rus. During this time, there was a convergence with the Byzantines, resulting in the adoption of Orthodox Christianity as the predominant faith, inaugurating an era of cultural and spiritual splendor. However, the 13th century brought trials with the Mongol invasion led by the Golden Horde. This Mongol rule triggered a dark period during which the Russians experienced subjugation. But driven by determination and resilience, the Russian people remained unwavering. Over the decades they overcame this tribulation, reclaiming their independence and forging their own path. In this resurgence, the 18th century was characterized by the powerful rule of Peter the Great. He catalyzed an era of changes and innovations in Russia. One of his most memorable achievements was the founding of the splendid St. Petersburg, which solidified itself as a cultural and political bastion of the country. Peter the Great, with his shrewd diplomacy and bold foreign policy, allowed Russia to expand territorially, establishing itself as a predominant power in Europe. This growth not only projected Russia on a global scale, but also provided access to natural resources and expanded its economic capabilities. Under his leadership, Peter instituted profound reforms in multiple sectors, modernizing the country and propelling its advancement. The 19th century placed Russia at the center stage of crucial events. Notably, during the Napoleonic Wars, Napoleon's invasion in 1812 turned out to be a disaster. Faced with the vast territory, severe climate, and Russian defensive strategies, such as the scorched earth tactic, Napoleon encountered an empty and burning Moscow. The exhausted and ill-equipped French army was forced to retreat, cementing Russia's tactical victory. However, the 19th century also witnessed domestic instability, with citizens demanding political transformations. Substantial uprisings, such as the 1905 revolution, demonstrated dissatisfaction with Tsar Nicholas II. While this revolution did not bring about immediate change, it signaled a broader revolutionary wave. In 1917, Russia underwent a dramatic upheaval with the deposition of the Tsar and the rise of the Bolsheviks, led by Lenin. This turning point introduced communism to the nation, giving birth to the Soviet Union. Lenin's impact on the Russian historical tapestry is profound, to the extent that his body continues to be displayed in Russia, despite ongoing controversies under Vladimir Putin's regime. According to the timeline, Lenin faced health complications that resulted in three strokes. As his health deteriorated, he fell into a deep coma, culminating in his passing. Although he had expressed a desire to be buried, this wish was ignored, and Soviet leaders chose to embalm his body. His final resting place is now a mausoleum located near the iconic Red Square, with dedicated professionals tasked with its maintenance. It is estimated that around 170,000 euros are invested annually to preserve the body in perfect condition. Amid the global recession of 2020, bold proposals emerged, including an initiative suggested by Russian political figures like Vladimir Novsky, which considered selling Lenin's embalmed body. Communist nations like China and Vietnam were mentioned as potential interested parties. However, this idea did not move forward as President Vladimir Putin decided to keep Lenin's body on Russian soil. The deconstruction of the Soviet Union in 1991 symbolized the decline of the most prominent communist state on the planet. This period witnessed escalating tensions in the political, economic, and ethnic spheres, with a strangled economy and various ethnic groups seeking greater autonomy sometimes leading to conflicts. The reform efforts led by Mikhail Gorbachev were not sufficient to reverse the situation, and Soviet republics progressively proclaimed their independence. Boris Yeltsin, leading Russia, played a crucial role in this phase of disintegration. Today, Russia presents itself to the world as a country with its own nuances, acting as a provocateur on the international stage. The nation faces challenges such as the conflict with Ukraine, and various global pressures, remaining steadfast in its principles. Many other fundamental aspects related to Russia, which were not explored, could be topics of future conversations or videos. The country is the stage for a vast array of historical and political events that have not only shaped it, but are still shaping the nation, making understanding Russia an expansive and fascinating field. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If you enjoyed the content, Please click like and subscribe to continue receiving our updates. Until next time.